My name is Dr. Alma Solis of the Systematic Entomology Laboratory. I work at the National Museum of Natural History, Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. Okay, today I'm going to show you how to quickly triage moths to major superfamilies only. When I get a moth, whether it has scales or it doesn't have scales, I can quickly get it to one of four major superfamilies based on the scales or no scales at the base of proboscis and based on where the tympanal organ is. The first thing I do when I get a moth, whether it has scales or not, is I look at the base of the proboscis. So first let's look at a smooth proboscis. So what we have here is the head of a moth and you can see the proboscis right here. This is a smooth proboscis, and here is the head-on view of the same proboscis. It is absolutely smooth, and after you compare this to a moth with scales at the base of the proboscis, you'll see the difference. So here you have another moth, and the moth head. Here's the proboscis. As you can see, there are definite scales at the base. Then the rest of it continues on without scales. Many times you will see scales just lying on top of the proboscis. If they're not in an organized state like this, where you can see that they're flattened like this in a, in a pattern, then it's just scales that accumulated from the trap or from some, uh, just from moth scales flying. If they have scales on the base of, of the proboscis, they can be either a pyroloidea moth or a galecioidea moth. The next step is to look at the abdomen to see if they have tympanal organs or not. Galecioids do not have tympanal organs on the venter of the first abdominal segment. Pyroloidea does. So you will look for the, the tympanal organ between the metathorax and the first abdominal segment. This is the most, one of the most difficult areas of the moth to see at all. They, it can be very furry, it can be mounted so that the abdomen falls, you can't see it, but this is where the tympanum is. You cannot see it very well, so I would suggest that if it is an issue, just pull the abdomen off and you will see either this type of tympanal organ. Many times I can see this praesinctorium through the side if it's a crambid, but if it's a pyralid, you will not be able to see anything, okay, unless the abdomen is soft because it doesn't have a praesinctorium because they're very flat. A lot of time what you will see laterally is this sclerotized area, the tympanum, sideways from the side. But if in doubt, pull the abdomen off or pull it up, but pull it up only if the specimen is um, is dry, otherwise you're gonna to have to pull the whole abdomen off to see if it's a galecioid or a pyroloid. If the proboscis is smooth, it can be either a geometroid or a noctoid. This is a, a, a smooth proboscis. What you see here is, you see these scales lying about? There is no pattern here. It's just lying there in every which way. Those don't count. They're just there by accident. But if you look at the proboscis, it is absolutely smooth. There are no sockets to see. So then we look at it laterally to see where the uh, geometrid has also has more of a lateral ventral type of tympanal organ. Of course, if it's very hairy, you may have to, uh, with a brush, take off the scales or remove the abdomen. But here you can see the lateral tympanal organ. They're not completely ventral, they're lateral. And many times you'll see this hole or you'll see a hood in this area. So this is a geometroid. So we have the noctua. This is a beautifully cleaned moth. You can see there are no scales. It's very, very smooth. And then you will look laterally between the metathorax and the abdomen. I look at it usually uh, sideways and you can see that there is a, uh, a very complicated tympanal organ right in here see this little hood on the abdomen and then if you turn the moth just slightly so you're looking at it like this you can see the more complicated thoracic part of the tympanal organ of course all of these can be seen by removing the the uh, abdomen and if you do that then it's best to put the abdomen in a glycerin vial to keep it with the moth 
I should also say, if the proboscis is smooth and it's not a geometroid or an octoid, generally, but not always, if the moth is small, then it's going to be a microlepidopter, which includes the tortricoidea. If it's very large, it's going to turn out to be something like a bombacoid, which you should be able to see just by looking at the moth externally.